Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Good morning, sports fans. As you can see, it's a beautiful day to learn about bleeding and what we're really here for, women's baseball. As you're probably aware, bleeding disorders come in two major flavors, those related to components of the coagulation cascade and those related to platelet abnormalities. In this sketch, the first in our series on bleeding disorders, we'll tackle the platelet disorders that can lead to abnormal bleeding. Make sure to check out our next sketch on coagulation cascade disorders to round out your knowledge of bleeding diatheses. Welcome to Von Willebrand Field, home of the Platelets, America's favorite women's baseball team, and our symbol for platelet disorders. We'll first cover the general findings common to most platelet disorders, followed by a more in-depth discussion of the specific conditions you'll need to know. Let's begin. Platelet disorders can be broadly divided into two categories those characterized by a quantitative defect, that is, low numbers of platelets, and those characterized by a qualitative defect, aka dysfunctional platelets. Before we get too specific, let's discuss some of the general symptoms and signs you'll see in most platelet disorders. We'll spend some time with this unfortunate superfan over here by the home team's dugout to learn more about the common presenting symptoms. Mucocutaneous bleeding is a common presenting symptom. This pattern of bleeding commonly manifests as frequent nosebleeds or gingival bleeding following minimal trauma, like brushing teeth, or getting hit in the face with a foul ball. Not exactly minor trauma, but you get the picture. Patients with platelet disorders may also come in complaining of tiny red dots over their feet and ankles. These are called petechiae, which are pinpoint capillary hemorrhages that form in dependent areas of the body. The one place you won't see petechiae? The soles of the feet. Patients may also complain of other, larger skin manifestations of bleeding, including purpura, which are larger macules formed by confluences of petechiae. Beyond that, patients may also have even larger lesions called ecchymoses, aka bruises, that are larger than one centimeter in diameter. Often, what distinguishes bleeding disorders is that patients will tell you they're noticing these lesions even in the absence of trauma. Large hemorrhagic bullae, aka blood blisters, can also form in the buccal mucosa represented by this purple gum flying out of the woman's mouth. In women, platelet-type bleeding can often present as heavy bleeding during menstruation, also known as menorrhagia, represented by the red contents of this lady's cute uterus-shaped backpack spilling out all over the stands. Notably, patients with platelet disorders tend to bleed almost immediately after an injury. This is in contrast to coagulation factor disorders, in which patients tend to have delayed bleeding since the functional, circulating platelets can still form an initial plug. By now, you should have a pretty good sense that some kind of bleeding disorder is going on in your patient. Let's move on to the objective findings you should look for to help you figure out exactly what's going on. First of all, your physical exam should entail looking at the skin and oral mucosa for all the findings we just discussed. Your patient will most likely have already noticed them, which is why we won't rehash them all again. With that said, let's get to the good stuff and look at some labs. Not to state the obvious, but when it comes to labs, the first test you should get is a platelet count. In quantitative platelet disorders, you'll see thrombocytopenia, which is defined as a platelet count less than 150,000 per microliter. To help you remember that thrombocytopenia equals less than 150,000 platelets, check out this scoreboard. See how the visiting team score spells out 150? Likewise, see how the home team score spells out 50? That's to remind you that when the platelet count dips below 50,000, your patient technically has severe thrombocytopenia. When patients reach this level, we start worrying about uncontrollable bleeding in the setting of surgery or trauma. All of this discussion of mild, moderate, or severe thrombocytopenia is really just academic, though. Just because your platelet count meets the criteria for thrombocytopenia doesn't mean your patient will actually have bleeding problems. 